This is a Lamborghini Diablo. Not any old raging bull, but the last of the line. A range topping 211 mile an hour GT version that was quickly slipped out of the factory before those sensible Germans from Audi took over the company. Under the not so subtle body kit, the GT is actually lighter than the standard Diablo and more powerful. Out onto the track then in the fearsome Diablo GT. Surely a car more designed for the road than the racetrack. First impressions are that it turns in extremely well. The nose of the car is such a, a big machine. It points in handily at the apex. I want to try and heel and toe, but the throttle and brake pedal are too far apart, and I can't really get a nice, slick shift. I can blip it on the way down, but not with my foot and the brake at the same time. See if I can get used to that. Back on the floor now. I mean, it pulls quite well over 5,000 revs. The brakes are solid. Let's check it out under heavy braking here for the hizzy chicane. Good. Can't complain about that at all. And nice and stable and square. It feels though as if uh, the brakes are not going to do too many hot laps of a racetrack. And once again, you've got to get it well over five thousand. Long throttle travel. Back into the car going like that, and even at 110 miles an hour, the wheels lifting slightly off the ground and spinning. Once again, nose pointing in very predictably, very nicely. A bit damp under the trees here, so give it a bit of respect. Check the brakes then, down into a large hairpin. Gearbox a little bit clunky, you have to give it a fistful to get it to change. So, I'm happy with the handling, I'm moderately happy with the brakes. The gearbox is a little bit clunky and heavy. The engine a bit empty, still making plenty of noise. So the Diablo GT handles and brakes better than I expected. But even though it has allegedly about 100 brake horsepower more than the F40, it's nothing like as much fun on the track. Perhaps it'll be a different story out on the road. Remember, I want to test whether these supercars can cope with the sort of mundane chores that we all have to do every day. Like popping down the supermarket, for instance, for the weekly shop. Including, of course, finding a parking space. As ever, one spot left, and it's absolutely tiny. Let's see if we can get this baby in there. I'm going to have to open the door. Have a look. Now I'm going to have to take my seatbelts off so that I can get out and have a look. That is seriously tight. Problem is, now the mirror's up in the air. The rear view camera helps a little, but it's strange. It doesn't give you a feeling of distance and it reverses the image. That will do. Luckily the door goes up rather than out, otherwise I'd have no chance. Let's hope the shopping's a bit less stressy. <laughs> Well, that went all right. The more you spend, the more you save, of course. Let's see how we can get it in this. Well, it's quite a big car, actually. Let's take a look under the front first. And it's full of a vent for some kind of cooling. We'll get some red wine in there, though. Bit of room temperature when it gets back. Extra virgin olive oil. What else can we get in? Spaghetti might just fit on that ledge, but it might block the fan. Anyway, we'll give it a try like that. Right, now surely they left some space at the back, as there's none at the front, but they haven't. It's full of six litre V12 and a big exhaust system. At least I can warm the bread up on the way home, so we'll slot that in there. But the rest of it is gonna have to come inside with me. Now oh, I don't look so cool with my shopping in the car with me. The eggs can go in the glove box and the toilet rolls in the passenger seat in case we get any nervous passengers. So, when it comes to real-world practicality, the Diablo GT is right up there with the Ferrari F40. It's a nightmare. Parking takes forever and there's no space to put anything. 
plus with all of those scoops, vents and wings, it's difficult not to feel very conspicuous when you're driving it. 